Hello my friends, in this video I'm going to take you through botanically dyeing and making your own big scrunchie, with specific reference to my scrunchie kit which is available on my website billynew.com, or you can just use your own flowers and fabric if you just want to give it a go. Do let me know in the comments how your projects turn out as I love to hear about them. Thanks very much. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel Billy New. Um, we're really happy to be here today because it feels like such a long time since we've done a video. Um, and I'm going to be taking you through how to dye and make your own scrunchie using our um, scrunchie dye kit, which is available on our, available on our website at the moment. Um, so this is the kit uh, with some awesome illustration by my friend Nina Cosford. You've got some coreopsis and marigold flowers there, a modifier. Um, your bamboo fibre to make your scrunchie, which has already been mordanted by me, so you don't have to worry about that when you get the kit. And also these really cute sticks that we collect from the river <laughs> um, that have been cut by beavers. You can see the, the teeth mark in the, in the ends of the sticks. So therefore um, bundling your, your scrunchie, but we'll go through that in a minute when we, we start the process. So we're actually gonna be doing a giveaway with one of these scrunchie kits this week. Um, if you want a chance to win, just write in the comments below why you'd like to win this scrunchie kit and I'll choose my favourite comment um, before the weekend. Or if you'd like to purchase a kit, just head over to our website. The link will be in the descriptions. There's also an ebook um, with instructions, written, written instructions, uh, which is available on the website as well. So get your piece of bamboo fibre. You'll have something that looks like this in your kit. Um, which we'll be able to turn into a scrunchie later on. You'll need to save your string from the box um, because that's what we'll use to tie up the bundle at the end of the um, flower putting process, flower sprinkling process. So it's really quite an easy process. As I said before, these um, pieces of fabric have already been mordanted, so you don't need to worry about that. So to start with, I'm just gonna give this fabric a little soak in some water, leave it for half an hour, an hour, just to get really saturated. My fabric's been soaking now for a little while. I'm just going to give it a really, really good squeeze. You can do it without soaking it as well. But I just like to um, give it the best chance of having the best colour because when this goes into the pot to be steamed, if there's if the fabric's wet, uh, it will get hotter quicker rather than having to get wet with the steam. So there we go, I've got my fabric laid out flat. I'm going to give it a little squirt with some vinegar to help enhance the colours when running out of vinegar. So yeah, just give your fabric a little spray. So now we've given the fabric a little squirt of vinegar, we can start sprinkling our flowers on. So these are really nice because they just give a really strong pop of colour, Coreopsis. You can do it sparingly or you can do it with all your flowers, it's up to you. If you want to try and dye something again, there are enough flowers to do more than, than, uh, than one scrunchie, so you might want to do it not fill your whole piece of fabric up with um, flowers. So I'm going to put some marigolds on. Now I'm just pulling the, the petals off these marigolds because I really want to save the seeds inside. If you look inside, you've got all these amazing seeds, so I'll be saving them for spring to plant them. But you can put the whole flower on as well. So some really nice different shades of marigolds here. There's orange, and then there's some really bright yellow ones and some golden yellow ones as well. You could just use either or as well, either or flower. And you get some really cool colours there as well. I really like the way marigolds, when you bundle dye them, you quite often get like the shape of the petal imprinted on the fibre. I really love these yellow ones. Use another one, Let's put a whole one. Actually, I, can't, I just can't not save the seeds. Yeah, you can go there. Yeah. 
Voila. I tend to just throw the flowers on however I feel like, but you could do some kind of pattern if you wanted as well. Okay, so now just going to give another little squirt for luck. Oops. And now I'm going to use my beaver stick, which in my opinion is the best bit about the whole process. So those are ones, these ones will probably be going in your kits if they fit. I might have to cut one of the ends off, but yeah, so this is my one that I've been using for ages and you can see that the flowers have like started to dye the wood, which is also really nice. And I'm just going to put it at one end and roll it up as tightly as possible. And I always think that they look like really delicious spring rolls when you do this because you can see the flowers coming through the fibre. So like if you wanted stripes or something, you could put um, coreopsis, marigold, coreopsis, marigold, and, you'd, and when you roll it, you'd get the stripes. That would be quite cool as well. But I quite like it like this. And marigold smell totally incredible. Okay, so there's my bundle. It's damp. I'm just going to keep it together. So then take your string from your box. I mean, you probably would have already undone your box, but... If you can undo it. nice illustration to one side and then so just tie your bundle at one end leaving a little bit extra because you'll want that to tie when you come back up and, oops wrap it tightly all the way around all the way down ready to go in your pot to be steamed. Heat sauce on, you just want it to be kind of gently steaming and then pop your thing in, it's a little bit big, into the pan. Put the lid on and then Leave it for an hour or so, but turning it every now and then just to make sure that the steam gets through the bundle evenly. So once you've steamed your bundle, so for about an hour or so, it's a really good idea to leave it for about 24 hours if you can resist the temptation to open it, just to let the colours kind of settle into the fibres. At that point, you can modify your colours by um, mixing a teaspoon of iron powder, which is in your kit, in some water. This is the iron powder. You'll want to wear gloves and a mask at this point because you should always wear a mask when you're working with powders and this can kind of make your fingers go black as well. So to wear gloves. So yeah, you if you wanted to change the colours to make these more of olivey green tones, you just put your uh, spoonful of iron powder in some water, mix it up and then dip your fibre into the water and let it rest for a few minutes until it goes to the colour that you want it to go. Um, at that point you need to rinse off the excess um, iron and then let your fibre dry. If you haven't modified it with iron then just scrape off the flowers um, and let it dry like that. Once this is dry you'll need to iron it with a a hot steam iron um, to help set the colours even further and then let it dry again and give it a wash with some pH neutral soap and then you're ready to make your scrunchie. And if there's any instructions that um, you feel are unclear 
in the video, please do take a look at our website because there's an ebook with written instructions as well, which will be able to help you. So yeah, now we're going to go and say the scrunchie. So now you've got your dyed and washed piece of fabric, dyed, dried and washed piece of fabric. Just set it on your ironing board and give it a hot iron. So that there's no creases. Look how beautiful these patterns are. I love them. Now you just need to trim your edges so there's no flyaway bits. Oops. Find the right side of your fabric, which can be pretty tricky with this sometimes, but it's the shinier side. So this is the right side. You probably can't see on the video there, but this is slightly matte and this is a bit shinier. So fold your fabric lengthways. Oops, it's a bit more. Lengthways and in half. And then press all the way along. Now you should have a crease going all the way down and you just want to fold in each end the same way as the crease, but around one centimetre. I don't really measure it, I just do it by eye. But one-ish, one or two centimetres is good because it gives you a lot of room to work with. Iron back on. So you've got something that looks a bit like this. Two folds at the end and a long crease along the middle. And this is the right side. Next, you need to get your elastics, which are in your kit. This is probably the bit that is the most confusing, even though it's quite a simple process. You need to turn your fi fabric over so the crease is on the outside and your folds are underneath. Take your hair elastic. I usually use two um, because I just like to know that it's going to be strong enough. But you can use one if you like, or you can use um, elastic which you tie a knot in, or anything really, but it's got to be elastic and around that size. You need to get one corner of your fibre. Hook the fabric through the elastics. And now you're going to have your right sides together. You want to get a pin and pin these top two um, sides, <laughs> edges together. Let me get my pins. So just make sure it's nice and even. You can do this without pins as well, but I just find when you pin stuff, it tends to make the, the whole project much neater or much easier to, to do. So now you've got your elastic and your fabric and your elastics hooked into your fabric and you just need to pull the elastic down and the fabric through and as you're going down pin down the long side just go all the way down just make sure it's nice and flat mm. 
Going all the way down. And then you put your two ends and you pin them together as well. Voilà. And now you've got an inside out looking scrunchie, which looks really pretty. And now you're ready to sew down this long side one centimeter in from the edge all the way around um, and if you don't have a sewing machine you can just use a needle and thread do back stitch all the way down or whichever stitch you're most comfortable with So this is my little studio setup that I have. It's really tiny and it's where I sew everything from um, for Billy New. It's just a corner of a room and I use my Singer sewing machine to sew everything which I love. Although one day I would like to invest in a proper industrial machine. This one's semi-industrial so it's still pretty powerful but it has a character shall we say which you need to learn. <laughs> So set up your sewing machine, thread your sewing machine. You can choose whatever colour thread you like, but I'm going for white. Um, go one centimetre. This has still got the selvage on this piece of fabric, but they shouldn't all have the selvage. So I'm just going to make sure I don't let that red line show. So I'm just going to put that on that side. And then in once. And back stitch and then forward again and a centimeter down all the way down your long side Okay, and now just get your fingers and turn your scrunchie um, the right way, right way out. So you like push it all through comme ça. And now you've got something that look like, looks like this. So you can just leave it like this, but I like to have the seam on the inside. Um, so that's why I iron it in half at the beginning because I have a a press mark there so I know which is which needs to go on the outside so I pull the seam to the inside and then I follow it all the way around and then just using this press line there I can just pull it out knowing that that's going to be on the outside be careful not to twist um, your fabric here because then you'll end up with a twist in your scrunchie when you sew the final edge so yeah, just keep going all the way around with that seam, seam line on the inside. Um, and then, this can be a little bit tricky, this bit sometimes. So choose, it doesn't really matter what, but choose which side's going in under the other side, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to put this one under this one. Just keeping the seam with the elastic, put one on top of the other. And then, 
pin that. Just get that first one in place and then you can kind of wriggle the rest of it into a neat seam. So he's just going inside that one. You can see the press line, just going to line them up and then pin all the way down there so that you've got a nice seam to sew down. seam ready to sew. Just make sure it's nice and you can feel it. Make sure that that's lined up with the back. Okay. So again, you can use your sewing machine or you can just back stitch all the way down or you can do like a don't even know what that stitch is called like a normal stitch along the edge whichever you find easiest and I've got some visual um, instructions how to do that in the in the instruction booklet that comes with the kit it's very simple so yeah plant your needle Forwards, backwards, forwards, and just keep going to the end. And don't worry about stitching over your elastic, it'll be fine. So this is the final result using our, our die kit. Um, the die kit's available on the website, like I said before, and we'll also have some scrunchies available if you don't want to have a go at making your own. Um, and there'll be, there is an ebook available with written instructions if you just want to have a go at doing your own, um, but without buying the kit. So lots of options available. As usual, if you like what we do, please consider subscribing, liking and commenting to help us um, on our journey to doing more videos.